Hey everybody, it's Master Gallon Geist here, bringing you my review for the premiere episode of the His Dark Materials show, Lyra's Jordan. And I was kind of iffy on it. There's some good parts of this and some parts that I'm like, mm, I don't really like as much. Overall, it's definitely your typical kind of pilot, but I think it succeeds more than it fails. And what it fails in, it's just really making certain things more interesting than, like, what's going on with certain other characters. So, we kind of start off, and we kind of get a low-key kind of introduction with some text talking about uh, the whole concept of daemons and how in this world, people's souls actually have a physical form and a distinct personality and different names going along and walking alongside them pretty much we'll kind of get into why that's kind of important as the series progresses because i even saw some of that going on in the after episode being like coming up on this season and that there is this powerful kind of entity the magisterium that kind of controls what's going on in this world so eh, we then alluding to some kind of flood happening and then us being in oxford being shown a james mcavoy's character taking this baby and getting it like scholastic sanctuary pretty much at this college place and telling them to keep these people safe it's like okay we'll have to see kind of how that goes on now even though this flood is kind of mentioned and we see stuff going along it really doesn't come up until kind of later like the 12 year gap and i hope we get kind of more information on that because Otherwise, it almost just seems like it's there to give the whole Egyptian kind of uh, storyline, like why they use boats more. So, he does that. He pretty much leaves the baby on the, uh, the doorstep, and then we go to 12 years, and we see that the baby has grown up to be Lyra, and that she's running around with her friend Roger and just doing kid stuff at the college. Granted, this... It's kind of a little bit annoying, but not really. When Lyra and Roger are together, they kind of balance each other out, whereas Lyra's gung-ho kind of adventurousness is kind of tempered with Roger being like, A, his cautious kind of approach and not wanting to rock the boat too much. Because when we see her kind of by herself, mainly towards the middle of the episode and the middle of what's going on in the story, you're kind of, she's kind of annoying. Now, granted, I understand she gets more tempered and everything as the series of the novels progress. But I'm just like, mm, she's kind of annoying me right now. And we just need to work on that kind of character development. And we just see them kind of tooling around the college, learning stuff. Roger is more of a person that's actually working there, whereas Lyra is kind of just studying and everything and kind of wondering what to do with her life to a degree. Well, not kind of wondering. She wants to go and be an adventure with her uncle, Asriel. And James McAvoy is really good as Asriel. And it was really kind of strange watching this because well, I know that the movie The Golden Compass had come out well, so many years ago. And I was kind of interested in love kind of comparing what was going on. And I really prefer his Asriel to what we had in that movie. Because he just... He really does a good balance of trying to do what he needs to do because he has a lot of a pretty big thing to go on with and having to deal with Lyra kind of dealing with him, you know what I mean? Because she wants to be with him and he's like, he's, you could see it in his mind. He's like, if I had time to explain and if you would understand, I would get into it. Because you see that in the interactions he has once he comes back to Jordan College. Because we see him in the North taking these pictures and everything. And evidently it's proof because he did this special kind of thing with what was going on with the camera. He's like, yes, I got this. And my other friend will help me get the money that we need to research this. So he comes back. We see him pretty much getting ready. He's, uh, She's all excited that he's there. She pretty much gets to a place where the master who's the head of the college and the one that took baby Lyra is 
pretty much getting ready for him to come and he poisons this wine. His daemon pretty much explicitly tells him to do it. And Lyra's like, shit. And of course, Azrael comes in and she just pumps out of nowhere and he's fucking like, this dude knows about like spy shit kind of. He's like, what the fuck's going on? And she of course is telling him about how it was poisoned and all that. And he's just like, oops, there, there was a mishap and everything. And he gets her to help him by putting her in a spot where she can like observe the room as he lays down what's going on with his research and talking about showing the pictures that he took that there this is proof of dust and evidently according to the magisterium this is heresy of what he's talking about and what he wants to do because he was able to show that people had dust around like when they're an adult but not when they're a child and that he looked at the aurora the northern lights and that there was another city there bringing up a whole thing of like a multiversal concept and that he wants to explore this more and everything and of course there were people talking about being careful with heresy and everything because yeah they they can do stuff academically unless the magisterium's like hey screw you so they've got academic control unless the magisterium's like uh fuck your shit and he's like, hey, look, I found the Grumman dude, and that was his head that he was, like, in a cooler box. I'm like, god damn. And they pretty much let him do it. And, of course, dust is an important concept in this universe, and he was telling Lyra to pretty much keep a lookout on what was going on with that, and she's observing everything. Granted, they kind of get done with all that, and we see that Lyra's pretty much asleep down there, and he pretty much takes her to her bedroom, she of course reiterates wanting to go with him and he's like listen can't go to sleep pretty much brushing her up very cold and just like whatever like not we don't know if it's because he doesn't like kids or it's like I've got more important shit to deal with right now you need to not do this so he goes off she wakes up because of course her friend Roger had pretty much brought in breakfast and said that Azriel was leaving and he's like I can't take you with me whatever peace out and goes off on his airship I do like that we have these different kind of technological advancements because we're talking about how this universe is parallel to ours and they're of course doing airships like Zeppelins uh, photography is kind of a weird mosh podge mix of like old school kind of Victorian plus kind of new school tech and all that it just looks really cool and interesting these are the kind of parts that i really like seeing the like different kind of take on the universes so that's about kind of where lyra's kind of ends at least a little bit before i go into the part that i really don't like which is the egyptian one this is mainly because i don't feel like there's really any connection with the characters at this moment we see this one person's uh daemon settling on a form uh, Tony, they're rejoicing on that. And his mother's like, oh, okay, cool. And uh, we see his brother kind of running off, Billy Costa. And he's kind of sad that he would be essentially losing his big brother. But I don't really see... Billy's not in there long enough to really... He's more of a plot object of something happens to Billy, they have to go after him. And Tony just really has nothing to latch on to. Like, really, I couldn't really tell you his wants or his needs or anything like that. He just pretty much had his daemon settle onto a bird kind of form and say that he was going to help the Egyptians and everything, since they're his family. And then Billy gets snatched by the gobblers, which of course is this urban legend, which really isn't an urban legend of people taking kids and everything. It's a big and important part of the first book of the His Dark Materials trilogy, going through with what they are doing and why they're doing it so Billy is taken up and the whole line pretty much deals with that mother being sad brother being sad and this one kind of lord dude of the Egyptians coming in and being like hey we gotta go look for him and if we don't find him we gotta go to London for this it's like okay and eventually they get to the end and just drive their or pretty much driving their boats to London that's pretty much it with the Egyptians I know they become important towards the kind of climax but there really aren't those kind of characters to kind of keep you invested in it. They're just one part of the mystery of what's going on with the world with, like, the Magisterium, Dust, and the Gobblers at the moment that's like, okay? Mm. 
Then we get to the portion where uh, Ms. Coulter's pretty much brought in. And damn her Damon of the, like, the monkey is just fucking creepy as shit. That gets important later as her role becomes better filled out. As we see pretty much the whole college having its dinner and everything and the master's pretty much introducing them and she's pretty much a female explorer. Kind of the uh, foil to Azrael. Really trying to butter Lyra up and pretty much get her onto her side. Talking about how they kind of want to go to, how she wants to go to the north. Lyra just asking all these kinds of questions of what she's done. And Col uh, Mrs. Coulter's like, hey, I want you to be my assistant. and want you to live with me in London and we'll do all these kind of things and everything. And like, uh, sh but one of the conditions is she wants Roger to come along with them. And what happens at that point? He then gets taken by the gobblers. I actually really like how that kind of scene played out. That's like one of the best scenes kind of that I've seen here is that he's just doing his regular kind of stuff and we had seen this kind of fox being used as with the gobbler that took Bill Costa. And we just see him kind of slink past one doorway as we then hear kind of like the whistling kind of thing going on as Roger goes to and it, we don't even see him really get captured. It's just... It did a really good job of building kind of tension and being like, oh shit. So Lyra is then trying to figure out where he's at and all that. She also gets uh, bequeathed the alethiometer and this is supposed to be an important tool for her to be able to tell who's lying and ascertaining the truth. It's like, okay, see how this kind of works. It's the design for it I am not that fond of. I won't say it's horrible or bad. It's just not what I'm kind of used to. So I'll have to see it kind of in action and how it kind of works out throughout the series, but we'll see how it goes on. Because we'd seen that the master and the librarian, the person that is usually been teaching Myra, know that she is a child of prophecy, that important things are going to be happening with her, and that betrayal is a central part for her, and that she is the one that will be doing this betrayal. So again, we'll kind of have to see how that works out. She, of course, decides to go with Mrs. Coulter because she is, <laughs> Mrs. Coulter is able to pretty much finagle her way to saying, hey, uh, Oxford's kind of small, so they would most likely take him to London to try and look for Roger. It's like, okay, interesting. So Lyra does decide to go on the airship and Mrs. Coulter is pleased about this and Lyra of course wanted to try and talk to her about what's going on with the gobblers. It says, ah, gotta be quiet about certain of those things. You could, Mrs. Coulter is definitely done in a way to lull you into a false sense of security. Granted, if you've read the books and everything, you know more about what's going on with their character, but they definitely play a fine line of trying to get you in a sense of unease with her. Same with Lord Azrael. It's like, okay, let's see how this goes. Because we also see that the Magisterium has gotten wind of what is going on with Lord Azrael and sends one of their own off to kind of hmm, do their own kind of thing to make sure that everything is kept on their own. Because the, anything that can threaten the Magisterium's power needs to be taken, <laughs> taken seriously and taken out kind of how they usually roll with this shit. So we'll kind of have to see how this goes. I liked certain interactions with characters, definitely with like Lyra and Azrael, Lyra and Roger, but Lyra on her own, I kind of got annoyed with. I don't know if it's that mainly with the material or with the actress. Now I liked the actress when she was in the movie with Logan, but it's kind of too early to tell. Usually with pilots like this, you have those shakeout phases where you have to balance out the world building, introducing the characters, kind of trying to get them up to speed, get you up to speed and what's going on with the world, and hopefully she kind of evens out as we go. But there is the double-edged sword of her either getting boring or getting even more annoying, i.e. where people do to certain feedbacks are like, okay, pendulum swing. Hopefully she evens out as it goes on. Mrs. Coulter definitely was another good one that I like because we're going to see how she kind of works out and how she tries to do her power plays. 
I think this was an overall pleasing start with the His Dark Material uh, show and just like getting into the source material. Hopefully we get more uh, character build up and development while also getting the world building because usually with the beginning episodes you kind of info dump world building and then you build characters later on. I would wish that most shows would kind of have a more balancing act effect of you don't regurgitate information you kind of want to do it as organically as possible while working on character development. So hopefully we get that character development in the next couple episodes, because this is only an eight-episode season, and they have already been greenlit for a second season. So we'll see. I am believing from what I have seen at the end episode being like, oh, okay, this is what's coming this season, that they are going to try and adapt each book per season. We'll have to see how that works out. So those are my opinions on the episode. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, also like and uh, also like and subscribe. And I hope you have a good day.